everyone, Pushing Up Roses here, and today I'm diving into another crazy episode of The Golden Girls. One of the things I like about this show, even though it centers around the lives of four older women, is that they don't always write stories about their age. Getting older is definitely a theme you see pop up pretty often, and I like how the show tackles the stigma of aging as a single woman, having the characters deal with the inevitable physical changes they go through, and giving them all individual relationship dynamics with family and romantic partners. It's commonly unabashed, clever, and touching. However, not every episode has to make a grand statement. There are so many episodes where age doesn't even play a role. It just shows the women in comedic situations like every other sitcom, and I love that it does. You don't stop having fun at a certain age, you don't lose your personality or sense of humor, and the Golden Girls show that by getting the characters into some wacky situations. Some of them are just so bizarre and unique that I have to talk about it. Which brings us to Till Death Do We Volley, episode 19 of season 4. I've seen this one a few times because I've seen every episode a few times at this point, and I never really realized how savage it got until I saw someone tweeting about it recently. The characters are actually known for being quite brutal, in fact you can find several videos on YouTube about their most savage moments, but this one went up to 11 for me. It also has some of the most killer jokes. It's rare that I dislike an episode of The Golden Girls, but this one is truly top tier comedy. This is a Dorothy episode, the main plot revolves around her. With most most half-hour sitcoms, you usually see two plots, one main and one goofier secondary story, but the Golden Girls doesn't tend to have a lot of extra storyline padding. It does tend to give the most attention to one idea, and I like that because I want to get the most out of those 23 minutes. Dorothy, who is my favorite character due to her epic wit and cutting facial expressions, is excited for her high school reunion because her best friend from that time will be in town. Her name is Trudy McMahon, and though Dorothy is expressing what seems to be genuine enthusiasm, Sophia is skeptical about her motivations. Trudy played what Dorothy calls a practical joke on her that involved the tennis team wearing their uniforms to their high school prom, but Dorothy was the only one that showed up in her whites. Your date must have been horrified. No, her brother was a really good sport about it. As a side note, this is one of the many continuity issues in the series. In other episodes, Dorothy goes to prom with Stanley, her ex-husband, and that is when she gets pregnant with her son Michael. Though even that story has a lot of continuity problems. I'm just very invested in this show and note every minor detail. Dorothy says that her and Trudy had a healthy rivalry and that playing pranks on each other was just part of their friendship. This causes Rose to go on a comical tangent about her being the butt of the joke all the time. Actually, it ran in her family. In our breakfast room, we had one whole wall covered with kick me signs we had collected. Uh huh. Dorothy rushes out for tennis lessons. She is eager to have a quiet game with Trudy. You know, a nice quiet game where she squashes her opponent. I'm gonna mop the court with. Dorothy and I share similar competitive natures. Don't ever challenge me to a game of Scattergories, it gets intense. I mean, unless you do want to challenge me so you can experience an excruciating loss. What in the world do they have B. Arthur wearing in this episode? I swear, the stylist gave her the strangest outfits. It's sophisticated and ugly at the same time? How is that even a thing? Blanche and Rose are getting appetizers ready as Trudy shows up. Oh, Trudy. Dorothy! Oh. What in the hell is she wearing? Why does she look like a stewardess? The shade starts before she even gets through the door. Boy, you look... It's been so long. Oh, you haven't lost your sense of humor. <laughs> Or those pesky 10 pounds. <laughs> my, my, the library is open. I mean, this gets brutal. I was really shocked when I saw this in my younger years. I used to watch back-to-back -back reruns with my mom, and my young brain thought that, quote, grandmas were supposed to be nice to each other. You know, they make cookies and knit. But this show portrays older women as actual people with personalities and interests other than bingo and rocking chairs. Anyone else notice that these earrings look like those chocolate coins? Hmm. They get to reminiscing and Rose quips about her high school days. You know, back in St. Olaf, I ran for president of the Bull Castration Club. I... I... <laughs> I got nothing, I got no comment on this. As Dorothy and Trudy head to the kitchen to get the appetizers and some drinks, Blanche expresses confusion about their friendship. She notices that they're taking longer than they should in the kitchen and all three ladies go to check on them. They find them arm wrestling. Trudy wins and Dorothy suggests they play a real game that requires skill. You know, like King's Quest 3. Or tennis. They chose tennis. Trudy is wrecking Dorothy, while the other girls look on relatively unimpressed. After a quick break, Trudy trips on the court and doesn't get up. 
Sophia claims she's dead and the girls rush over. Dorothy is beside herself with grief and guilt and the girls try to comfort her. Rose works at a grief center and is pretty good with her advice. Blanche tries to lighten the mood with a salacious story because that's what Blanche does. Rose says that the reunion party will take her mind off things and I'm like, what? The reunion is at their house? Why? Actually, this is very common in this show. The ladies of the house were always hosting parties and events, though you'd think a high school reunion would be at a high school or a restaurant. Maybe this is for a select group of friends. The party seems to be going well, except that Dorothy hasn't been seen for the last two hours and the attendees are also looking for Trudy. Sophia volunteers to talk to her daughter, trying to urge her to get her crap together in not so many words and to get out of her room and host the party. I see we've upgraded from elegant workout clothes to wearable couch upholstery. Right, so Trudy is dead, Dorothy feels responsible, and now she's gonna have to announce her untimely demise. Now is there something you'd like to share with the class? Something tragic happened this morning. Oh my, I need your help. Sure, sweetheart. Trudy's dead. She's blunt, but she isn't wrong. Dorothy's tearful, guilt-ridden admission is really striking to me. B. Arthur was such a fantastic actress. Even when she is acting sad, feigning tears, and spewing words of grief, she manages to sneak some humor into her tone and delivery. We might as well take down that banner and put up one that says, Welcome to the Dorothy Kill Trudy Party! <laughs> After Dorothy storms off, the doorbell rings, and it's Trudy, who did not die. This begs so many questions. How does someone fake their death in front of four other women? Was the ambulance called? Did ladies see Trudy's body being taken away? Did they not take her pulse? What is going on here? How do you fake your own death? Asking for a friend. So everyone is justifiably pissed, despite Trudy insisting it was just a practical joke and meant no harm. This is where it gets really bonkers, though. I just... I just, I just really need you to think about what is about to go down in this episode. Really consider how ridiculous it is. Okay, deep breath. The ladies convince Trudy to go apologize to Dorothy right away and they approach her room. Dorothy keeps telling everyone to go away, but Trudy is confident she can cheer her up, so she just heads right on in. Everyone is overcome with shock as Dorothy is seen under the covers with Trudy's husband. Sexual healing indeed. Trudy is taken aback, furious at her husband. I like Blanche's expression the best to those. She's just like, oh shit, this is good. After some back and forth, Dorothy and Trudy's husband fling the comforter away, revealing their fully clothed beings. Gotcha! <laughs> Dorothy somehow figured out that Trudy was playing a prank, so she got her husband to leak the details and they worked on this joke together as the ultimate act of revenge. To everyone's surprise, Trudy is impressed with Dorothy and they hug it out? What a weird friendship. Blanche, however, is pissed. I cannot believe you put Rose and me through this. Yeah! She tells Dorothy she's gone too far and that her and Rose will never speak to her again. She storms off briefly and then... Gotcha. <laughs> I love Blanche. Okay, can we just acknowledge how incredibly messed up this episode is? These are women in their 60s, well, 30s, according to Blanche, but yes, older women playing the cruelest jokes I've ever heard of on each other. I can't imagine what would go through my mind if I went through this insane grieving process over someone who was just kidding. I know in this case it's a little different because Dorothy was suspicious of Trudy's sudden death, but still, what if she wasn't? That could traumatize someone. And my god, the revenge. So you're telling me that Dorothy knew it was a joke and decided to play her own where she convinces Trudy that she slept with her husband. This is sadistic. This is the kind of weird crap you might see on a sitcom involving younger people. It's a little jarring seeing mature adults pulling such insane pranks. I know this is more of a zany plot that cannot really be explained, so I don't want to dissect it too much, but I'm honestly the most confused about how Trudy pulled this off. I still don't understand how you would fake your own death, especially when your plan involves falling over in front of people who could just take your pulse or call an ambulance. But this is television, so I am trying to suspend my disbelief. Despite the absurdity of this episode, part of me really appreciates seeing older women in these more mischievous roles. You're getting all the zaniness of a sitcom, but it's also smart, cutting, and somewhat relatable. Well, 
in a hyperbolic way. I'd say in reality these women are just cruel and terrible, but the intelligent comedy kind of makes up for that, as does the always supportive friendship between the four lead characters. As I mentioned earlier, there are plenty of serious episodes in this series that focus on age, though it doesn't even come up in this one. They are just older women being kind of ridiculous, and I'm here for it. I just never stopped to think about how ridiculous this episode really was, and these insults are as creative as they are ferocious. Boy, I envy you your gumption. Yes, and I your breast implants. <laughs> Dorothy, you look wonderful. Uh, the left one turned out nice. <laughs> And I want to reiterate how great the jokes are in this episode, but that's pretty common for the Golden Girls as a whole. Some things age poorly, but in terms of consistency with laugh out loud jokes, the show is definitely on the top rung. We gonna play or do you want to forfeit? No way. Now Dorothy's born act doesn't know the meaning of the word forfeit. And she's a teacher too. <laughs> how does it feel to have your butt whipped? Well, sometimes I find it strangely titillating. <laughs> This episode is actually very dense with jokes. They cram so many in there, it's almost like a riff session. If a joke doesn't land, that's okay. There's a million more that might. So I highly recommend this episode. It's just shocking and funny and has some amazing acting by B. Arthur. Of course, if you have an episode of The Golden Girls you would love to see me cover, please leave a suggestion in the comments. And until next time, thank you for being a friend. Hey everyone, thanks again for watching my video on this absurd and slightly messed up episode of The Golden Girls. If you want to see more of my work, I'll have some links for you after I mention my Patreon campaign. That's right, Patreon! Don't you want to share the love, spread the money, make smaller YouTubers' channels grow and all that shit? Yeah, you can help me by donating a few bucks here and there. If that's not your gig, no worries. Shares, likes, and comments also inflate my already questionable ego. Here's a few videos you might like. On the right, we have a Golden Girls breakdown on one of my very favorite episodes where the ladies dress up as giant birds. On the left, I have something a little different, a breakdown on my favorite Goosebumps episode. I have a little something for everyone. Thanks again, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.